Hi guys, in this video we'll be explaining how and what are Next.js API routes. So in the first video I think we explored what is a file structure in Next.js and how the files are structured in the file directory. So if you have a Next.js page, how it's gonna be like is you'll have let me just search for folder yep you have the app folder first of all at the top level let me name it app and then you have a subfolder within the app folder right so let me just make a clone of that and if it's a block page for instance inside the app folder you will have the block folder right and inside the block folder you'll have a file and the name of the file will be page.js or ts or tsx or whatever right pretty straightforward stuff that we've been dealing with the last eight to nine videos right and next year's api routes are also directed the same way so this makes it really easy to remember the folder structure so let me just make a thing real quickly so in the blog if you have a dynamic route so you'll have the slug right so within square brackets the slug and inside the slug you'll have the page.js the page for the dynamic route and api routes are exactly the same way it follows the same structure so let me just show you so in the app directory we'll have a direct folder called API right and inside API you'll have the route for blog so the folder name will be of course okay so suppose it is posts and inside posts you'll have our file so let me just search for file there you have it and below this we have route.js right so the name of the file route.js and within that post folder you'll have the dynamic folder so give it in square brackets so id this will be the dynamic route and dynamic route id will have route.js inside that exactly the same way and if you have another API route you can call it users and users will have its own route.js and its own dynamic route folder structure so pretty simple to understand and you know construct these routes and pages and it really is uh, compact and resilient this type of structure right and all these um, all these structures so this will come uh, under the API folder which I forgot to put it let me just put it up real quickly if you are taking down this structure so let's create folder and API So this is the structure of API routes and let's make one API route. So inside app, let me create the API folder and inside folder, let's call it blog. Let's make it one for blog because we are using the APIs for uh, fetching data in blog, right? And route.js, let me export const to get. It will be async because that is one requirement. And inside the try catch, I will say throw new error error and let me just console log this error just like that console log error and inside the try catch I'll write cons posts is equal to await posts get posts okay so this is exactly what we did just that we are moving it to the api route and we will return next response 
dot json of posts right and here we will write connect to db check if the db connection is there or not if not it will create a connection sorry so here get post instead of that we should await post dot find and let's delete that import statement and post will come from models so so yeah so in blog dot js we can write cons get data is equal to async and inside that we will say post and fetch it right so where are we fetching it from so basically what happens is when we create an api route the route will be available wherever the server is on whichever port it the server is running slash api slash blog and if you want you can give it a uh, revalidate 3600 so pretty straightforward way so what we are actually doing is we are writing the server side code in here right because this allows us to build full stack applications so we don't need a separate backend we can write it inside of next.js itself and all the routing and other stuff will be handled by next.js so really simple way to write code uh, so this was the first time i was trying a pair outs and it worked like a charm I mean the workflow is really fast guys I mean if you have been using something other than this then try using next.js start following my tutorials uh, if you haven't I know there are way better tutorials out there but this one is to the point and very easy to follow and same thing let's do it for the dynamic route as well and the dynamic route will create a slug and the route.js just copy paste the code it will have params that is the only difference let's destructure slug from the params and we will say post.find1 of slug and return the response let me make it post and let's comment this out not sure if we need this let's see so under generate metadata we can say export const sorry we don't need export const get post data is equal to async and it will take slug as the param error function let's see I can reuse this right let me just copy this I don't want to write it like multiple times the same code is it keeps repeating const get post data okay we just need to change this URL so since it's a dynamic route and I want to add a parameter let's change it into backticks and use the template riddle so here I will have slug and I will take slug slash blog slash slug right and I don't want any caching for this because I want the data to be you know in the details page I want the latest data so I don't want to cache it and here I will return the same thing and maybe I need to come and uncomment that code because I want to set the slug all right it still points to get post this is wrong so let's just quickly fix that I want get data not get posts so I don't want anything from data.js right and let me uncomment this inside the dynamic blog or blog details or whatever you can call it you can call it whatever you want and we have blog page as you can see it's working API routes are working and the detail page is also working and that's all for today's video i'll see you with another video in the next one where we'll be handling next auth till then goodbye